Um, we are going to dive right into our first Q&A session with Dr. Cynthia Bennett, Senior Research Scientist at Google and Responsible AI and Human-Centered Technology, Frank Olasky, PhD student in Human-Computer Interaction at Carnegie Mellon, and Charles Lapierre, Principal Accessibility Architect at Benetech, and they will be digging deeper into the challenges and solutions for image descriptions for complex scientific content. And check out bios and other session info in the chat. Yeah, I think um, we were going to have Charles start out. Just We were going to talk about our wins, I think, is how we wanted to start the session. We were just going to say the things we were hoping for as a like really good outcome of the session. Sometimes it's hard, I think, in Q&A or in panel sessions to have sort of a focus or a thing um, that we're keeping in mind while we're moving the discussion forward. And so I guess I'll kick that off and then, you know, Charles and Cynthia can go. Um, but yeah, for me, I think I came into this, um, I think somebody had already mentioned, maybe it was Bill, um, that we don't have to make the case that accessibility is important. You know, most people do believe it's important. And actually, I think maybe my takeaway is that everybody here today really does see the value of accessibility, even if they were on the fence or they're new to this or they're not sure, or maybe they're in the camp of folks who um, think that doing uh, accessibility work is a burden or a challenge that um, that maybe their thinking on this can be reframed in a light that that sees the broader benefits and the good um, that uh, access work provides. So yeah, I think that that's my, the win, the thing that I'm hoping for as an outcome of this. Yeah, Charles Lapierre here from Benetech. Um, my win would be, you know, basically to educate folks on, you know, so mostly primarily scientific papers are almost always in PDFs and, uh, but it has so many limitations. Uh, if you're a dyslexic person, for example, you can't change the font to your specific font. If you read Courier uh, and the papers in Times New Romans, you're gonna make a lot more mistakes. So having a, a format that allows you the flexibility to make it reflowable, adjust the size, font type, et cetera, is a huge win. And I think uh, just there's other formats like EPUB and you know even just HTML uh, directly. Um, and th these are some of the things that we're hoping for to show you all to today. While we're waiting for Cynthia to rejoin, Frank, what are you seeing as some of the, you know, in your uh, expertise, in your field of uh, challenges right now? Oh yeah, good question. As a note, she just texted me. She said we could get started if you want, but also I'm happy to chat too. I guess she's going to try and troubleshoot and then hop back on. Um, yeah, I, we can start the demo, I think. Let's okay. jump in. Okay, sure. So, it, so for me... Yeah, for yeah. those watching, just as a little context, we have some demos um, that we want to show of um, just sort of um, alt text, different approaches to image description. Um, and uh, as part of our demos, we also have, you know, we're going to be showing a little bit of like the markup for for how we do this. And we were going to sort of co-discuss as panelists and then at the end have a QA. and a So just as context. All right. So let me share my screen. And I'll, I'm also going to share my sound because I'm going to bring up from time to time voiceover. Okay. So... Um, this is a typical image that you may find in a scientific paper. It's uh, slightly complex where we have a couple different uh, bar charts here. And, um, and it also has a fig caption. Uh, so for sighted folks, it, everything's fine. You know, you can pretty much get everything you need to know by looking at the image and the fig caption. But if you can't see that image and all you have is fig caption, you're in serious trouble especially if the uh, alt text description, you know, is the only thing you see. So in this case right here, this is the image and it has an alt text description. So when I go back to the uh, here and I turn on voiceover. Voiceover on Safari, extended description using HTML details and summary window, extended description using HTML details. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this. 
Heading Level 1. Extended Description Using HTML Details and Summary. So having a H1, Heading 1, this is important. It gives hierarchy and easy for you are currently on a to, uh, to get uh, jump by headings. Now I'll go on to the image. And if uh, you, there is no image description, you're going to get nothing, which is very problematic. But in this case, we have an image description. Figure 2. Two stacked bar charts depicting the percentage of overall scores by figure type, top, and the percent description scores by description type, bottom. Each figure may have more than one figure type, e.g., data visualization, and image, n equals 300, figure. Okay, so that's the fig caption that was just read. Now if I move one more, I'll actually get to the... You are currently in a fig. The top chart plots the percentage of each score, zero blank, one descriptive, two somewhat descriptive, three descriptive and four very descriptive, for each type of figure, all figures, data visualizations, images, diagrams, text blocks, and tables. The bottom chart shows the percentage of descriptions with each score for both overall descriptions, and then broken down by captions, alt text, long field, and alt text, short field, image. All right, so that's great, but in, in that case- that's You are currently on an image. That's a lot of information that, um, you know, you have to cognitively try to make sense of all that, right? Um, and I see that Cynthia has joined. We're just getting started with our demo. Cynthia, did you have anything, is your audio working? And do you have anything to, uh, before we move on to the uh, writing the extended descriptions for these? No audio yet. I think that's okay. I think, I guess it'll just be you and me. You and me, <laughs> Shell. <laughs> I'll just work through it. Okay. I mean, I can kind of, I guess I can kind of like provide commentary as we go through this. So you know, for, for the folks at home, what we're showing is a screen reader navigating a chart with an image description currently, and there's a fig caption provided. We're doing this in HTML, um, which we will sort of discuss at the end why we're demoing in HTML image descriptions. Um, there are a lot of advantages to that, but yeah. Anything else I should add, Charles? I think you're doing great. Keep, keep okay. going. All <laughs> you're right, doing no great. worries. <laughs> Cynthia, I'm you know, our expert here as a blind um, user, she struggles with this all the time, like you heard earlier today, right? Um, so a lot of times in 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 PDFs, it'll just say image and you won't even get that rich um, all text description that we we got just now. So I'm gonna turn off voice over Voice over off. And um, the next thing what we're gonna do is go to so that's great if we just have the image description. The next thing we're going to do is add in an extended description. So we're going to have, we're going to bring up um, a, uh, a tool uh, in the HTML toolbox called summary and details. And this allows you to put in details right under the image. So you have context of the image and then it's extended uh, description right below the image. And you can either expand it to, you know, see that extended description if you need it, or just skip right over it if you don't need that information, right? And the, the idea here is the alt text description gives you a high level overview of the image itself. And then if you need that extended description, you can open it up. And having that extended description also could help uh, folks with different type of cognitive disabilities be able to see that. So now I'll switch back here bring up the second example. And in this example, you'll see that at the bottom here, we have this extended description. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the voiceover here. Voiceover on Safari. Extended description using a heading level figure okay. to the we'll top chart this. plots, extended description, collapsed summary, group. Okay, so now I'm going to um, expand the summary. Extended description, Ex heading Heading level two, extended description for top chart. Overall around 50% of figure descriptions, considering the alt text and captions together, scored three or above, and around fifth, zoom.us, zoom floating vid, safari, extended description using HTML details and summary, window. Overall around 50% of figure descriptions, considering the alt text and captions together, scored three or above, and around 50% of figures scored two or below. A figure extended description show okay, sidebar so, button yeah, tab group picker i was trying to stop it from talking and i was kept pressing the wrong button 
apologize for that. So you get the idea here. You got this extended description. We actually have H3s uh, for the extended description, so you can jump directly to those as well for the top and the bottom chart. Um, and again, you get that more rich information about the um, about those um, those the figure itself. But this is a this is a bar chart, and a bar chart we can actually get into the actual table and get to the numbers because. Uh, visually, I can look and I know that, you know, uh, for Outlook has new things, window as file uh, turn off voice, voice over off. <laughs> you are. All right, here we go. So I can see that, for example, uh, text block here. Uh, we have four for uh, sorry, seven of blank two that has uh, non description and four that has somewhat descriptive. Right. But to try to get the that information from the um, extended description. You have to listen to all that, and it's not as easily readable, uh, readable or available to you than looking at the chart and or in a tabular format. So the last part is getting this information where we have that information as well. So when I click on here and go to the extended description, we now have the full extended description with the, the summary of the um of the extended of the top chart and then actual table data here and again now when you go into the voiceover and okay why is it not reading to me Ooh, voiceover off it's not speaking okay voiceover doesn't like me right now um right, one more time Voice over on Safari. Extended description using HTML details and summary. Window. Overall. Heading level 3. Table of top figure data. Percent overall description score by figure type. Table 8 columns. 7 rows. So that was the table um, caption. And now I'm going to go into the table. You are blank. Co blank. Column 2. Not descriptive. Column 3. Somewhat descriptive. Column 4. Descriptive. Column 5. Very descriptive. Column six. Number. Column seven. Percent. Column eight. Row two. Column one. All figures. C blank. Twenty four. Not descriptive. Very small percent. Co somewhat descriptive. One hundred fourteen. Extended description. So as you can see. Extended now, description. Stop, stop. There you go. Uh, now you can actually do. Uh, the screen reader user can go and navigate and hear those percentages directly in this table view, uh, allowing you to really get uh, full control and access to all of that rich data that's in this image that you wouldn't necessarily get. Voice over off. And just to do that, in if we look in the, uh, the actual um, HTML code, if I... Uh, here we have the details. I can open this up. This is the summary. This is what you click on to get that extended description. Now we have our extended descriptions here, and then I can actually open up here, and now I can pop in here. This is all the table markup that you can, you can use, and similarly for the bottom graph. And then I added in some styling here so that you get that nice um, table here with, uh, you know, with the grid lines. Uh, for a visually looking uh, presentation. Now, the this is you know this is all with uh, this called the summary details clickable. The other option, the other approach is let's say it is a PDF, and you're like, well, I can't add all that image like uh, that extended description summary details. It doesn't work. Well, in that case, what you can do is this other approach uh, that we have, where you actually have a link all this link to the extended description where you would click on the link and it will take you this image now is uh, presentational because it already had you already heard that extended description and then you have all of your extended description the tables uh, both the top and the bottom and most importantly a link back to your original document to come back here um so uh i just yeah. want, i'm just jumping on just a 
be Please. sensitive of time since we're a little behind. We, I think we have like five minutes. You're doing great. You're doing great. We're just, I think we have five minutes left on ours. And uh, I know we wanted some Q&A. So just to recap, because I think we sort of just jumped right in. Um, we're kind of demonstrating what might be sort of the best case experience for chart descriptions. So as context here, when you're writing a paper that outputs to PDF, you may not have rich um, capabilities for structuring a document like this, which is why that final example was just like, you can provide a link to something that is really rich um, that's in HTML. But what we wanted to do is just show like, this is a great HTML experience and really something that we would hope for and strive for and kind of, you know, um, the, the richness that we can, um, uh, express in HTML allows us to break down the complexity of something like a data visualization or a diagram that might be um, pretty hard to do with just alt text um, or a short description in a paper. Um, oh. This is Cynthia. Am I audible? Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Oh my gosh. So I'm on, my phone. I'm on my phone. So this will be a video free. Um, and I missed like everything you all said. So I will maybe stay quiet and, and address a specific question if something comes up at the end. But sorry, everyone. Terrible computer problems. No problem. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> I see Bill's hands raised. Okay. Thanks for calling on me. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, another thing I thought might be useful to point out is that, you know, as you were showing that uh, table data in the uh, uh, extended description, I was going to point out that very likely those that figure was created from table data like that in the first place. <laughs> so yep. most likely, you don't have to make that table data. It's already in an Excel file or something that somebody used to make the graph. Yep. And in that case, Bill, there was a lot of, um, on the, um, the graph image itself, you didn't have a number in some of those small slivers where you would actually have that those numbers in the real table. And so then you would get even a better experience because you'd be able to see what, you know, less than, you know, maybe it was 1% or whatever, uh, where it wasn't shown in the graph uh, in the actual image because it would have made the too cluttered, right? Um, so that, that would be an advantage in this point. Yeah, you know what, my comment I made in the earlier session, because I my practice is about workflow, is that usually those graphics that are in you know, scientific papers are often made by a graphics department at a university. The author themselves isn't necessarily making those graphics. But um, so you, you've just got, by the time it gets mm -hmm. to, the, to the paper, you're several steps removed from the data that actually is what assistive technology would like in the first place. But it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just got dropped. Thanks, Bill. Great point. Yep. Is there any other Q&A? Do you see anything, Frank? I wasn't watching chat too closely. Um, this is Cynthia. Frank, did you get a chance to talk about um, chartability and kind of, you know, for folks who can kind of self-publish things beyond a static PDF format, like what would actually also be cool is interaction um, did you get a chance to touch on that? No, I didn't. I uh, I just want to say that I have a prior project called Chartability. It was designed for practitioners writ large who are making like data experiences, data visualizations, data interfaces to make those more accessible. And actually quite a lot of Chartability is applicable to um, understanding how to make, you know, scientific figures mm -hmm. and papers more accessible. But also I think it, it, for those of you who are only publishing in kind of PDF through publishers, it might also open your eyes and, and give you an opportunity to kind of see other ways that you can put your work out there that might be more interactive, it might be richer and also more accessible. So that's my project called Chartability. I put a link because I can only chat with panelists, put a link in there, maybe they can extend it to like, I have an HTML version of our paper on that. And then there's also a link to the project itself from there. I guess this is Cynthia just echoing 
uh, I've seen a lot of things come through the chat about like kind of the excitement of automation and, and AI and um, just, just remembering that there are um, aspects of accessibility that are that are practical and that are needed right now. And then there's accessibility as a research question. And, um, you know, there are scientists already publishing and reviewing like me and many of the other blind people and people with disabilities who've commented, um, we, we need access now and there are, you know, robust best practices. And so let's, you know, kind of remember that with, with the excitement of, of potential future um, advances with, with AI not to lose track of the the best practices and the tools we have right now um, that will ensure that you know people in our field can get access right now so just want to echo those wonderful points made by many many earlier panelists i i don't uh, see a question in the chat about tableau uh, and live table data i'm not familiar with that either the other panelists are yeah what's the question I just exactly. said curious about Tableau plotting, Plotly, mm. et cetera, live data. Right, right, right. Yeah, I have tons of experience in that space. I want to respect the next Q&A because we're at 355. So folks, find me or the other panelists on Twitter, extend the discussion in um, the document. Um, hopefully we can get to that question. It's a really good one. I think online tools are really rich. That's my space of work. So yeah, I'd love to chat more about that. And quickly, the table is not hidden. The table is actually visible in the uh, two examples that we showed, um, either right directly under in the extended description or on the uh, separate page. Thanks. Thanks so much, guys.